India and South Africa have economic ties dating back almost to the dawn of democracy in our country. This was the backdrop to the India-South Africa Business Summit held in Santon recently. In today's global economy, no one can afford to go alone. And it's important to focus attention on building strong business relationships. That's why high-powered government and private sector individuals are meeting at the Business Summit. I'll be meeting up with some of the key players. While meetings and discussions took up most of the program, it also featured a curtain raiser dinner, while fashion provided a visual feast curated by Gavin Roger using fabric as the medium. Kadi is more than just a traditional type of cloth because it also represents one of the ways that Gandhiji challenged the British colonial overlords during the Raj. It's a perfect choice of cloth to pay tribute to Nelson Mandela and the Mahatma. Gavin, what inspired the concept Kadi to couture? Kadi is hand spun and it's a traditional Indian fabric and it's really kind of been labeled as a fabric of emancipation and liberation. Gandhiji was the first to bring it to prominence. He did it during a time of colonial rule and he tried to empower Indians by saying, look, let's try and use this fabric instead of actually having the West export our cotton out and then bring it back. It was just very apt. It was just kind of a fabric that kind of connected everything. And literally, we've been inspired by India. We brought a contemporary sensibility of the way we've used the Kadi, and we're showing it in a very kind of high fashion way. The event was arranged by the High Commission of India in South Africa in partnership with India's Ministry of Commerce and Industry and South Africa's DTI. Michelle met the High Commissioner. A very warm welcome to Mela and congratulations on your appointment. Thank you so much. This is the inaugural event and it has a very special theme. Could you give us the thinking behind it? The theme talks about a very rich past between our two countries and it's not just about the past. We have a rich past but we are confident that we have an equally rich future. So this summit is forward-looking and it sets to increase the economic footprint of India and South Africa and South Africa in India. Which are some of the areas where you believe the two countries can develop their partnership? CEOs have met from both sides and they have identified certain sectors where there's tremendous synergy between our two countries. That could be mining, pharmaceuticals, automotive parts, startups in both countries, women entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises. The potential is huge. India's delegation is led by Minister of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, who will be engaged in talks with South African Cabinet Minister, Dr. Rob Davies. Once the photo op was over, Michelle spoke to the heads of the two delegations. What, in your view, are the key areas in which South Africa and India can develop their strategic partnership? We work together very closely for the trade issues to protect interest of developing countries. And while we do this, we also felt the need to develop our own economies by common commonalities that exist between two of us and finding out what more can be done. Dr. Davies, why do you believe that the two countries' business sectors are such a perfect match? As far as South Africa is concerned, we are now in, I think, a much better space in terms of our appeal as an investment destination. President Ramaphosa has set a very ambitious target for investment, and we are putting out the red carpet. Frankly, we are hoping that we can attract more investments, deeper investments from India, as well as play our role in India. A number of business leaders also participated in the discussions. It's always great to see a familiar face. Welcome back to Mela. Absolutely, right. it's so good to be back on Mela and uh, today is a great day for South Africa. What is the main purpose of this business summit? The CEO Forum consists of some of the leading business CEOs and chairmen of India and South African companies and we think we should be doing more together in businesses. We can uh, make sure that South Africa can stand on its own when working together with our Indian brothers and sisters, we can grow the economy of this country. Having completed their first day of business, the delegates had an opportunity to meet in a more relaxed environment and socialize at the dinner table that evening. It is almost time for the gala dinner and I cannot wait to see how the night unfolds. It promises to be the perfect fusion as India and South Africa collaborate. With the VIPs having taken their seats, the High Commissioner sketched the background to the summit. We are a 5,000 years old civilization. Knowledge from our Vedas, some of the oldest texts of the planet, transcend the barriers of race, creed and religion, extending to all parts of the world and peace, advocated from our ancient Gita, has uplifted and touched souls. 
Minister Suresh Prabhu then addressed the gathering. Nelson Mandela and Mahatma Gandhi, many of the problems that we are facing in the world today, so much confrontation, so much tension, all of that can be addressed, resolved, if we follow the philosophy of these great two individuals. So can this be a fashion of tomorrow? The evening also saw the launch of a book written by Fakir Hassan, commemorating the signing of the Red Fort Declaration in 2003, which formalized the strategic partnership between India and South Africa. The theme of Afro-Indian solidarity was then picked up by the Thrubangi Dance Theatre, with the performers presenting a spectacular interplay of cultures. <laughs> The Kadi themed tribute to Madiba and the Mahatma showcased another aspect of the exchange of ideas between our nations while celebrating the lives of two international icons. Although it is usually woven from cotton, Kadi can also include silk or wool, and in contrast to its humble origins, it now enjoys high fashion status. The yarn that Gandhiji spun in his struggle against the power of monopoly and economic repression has now become a proud symbol of heritage, freedom and prosperity. This also highlighted how world-class quality can spring from handicraft. At the same time, the commercial potential of high-end fashion would not have escaped the delegates' attention. And the entertainment of the evening combined with the formal discussions of the day provided the guests with ample material for conversations around the dinner table. We should never underestimate the importance of the human element in cementing strong international and business relations and how important friendship and understanding can be on a strategic level. South Africa is entering a new phase in its economic development, which will determine the future for all South Africans. This means that our strategic partnership with India is all the more important. United by legacy, unified for prosperity.